Hello my friend, in this lecture you will learn how to move this character, but of course not from this place, but after running our game I want to use my keyboard and when I hit the left button arrow I want to move left, right, I want to move right. How do we achieve things like this? Well, firstly, you need to know how to instruct your game. And in order to make instruction, so some things like orders, of doing something to any element, like for example player, you need to create script. Script is like a small program with instructions to what should happen when something happens. <laughs> yes, that's, that's, that's really a good uh, thing to explain. You want to happen things you want to make things happen when something happens. So when something hit the button, I want to move this guy, right? For example, like this. And in order to achieve that, we need to attach a script to what? In our case, a player, right? Because we want to move player. How to do it? You can do it by hitting this plus button here with some kind of script icon, right? Or you can hit the right click and then hit the attach script. So. We're gonna use this method and then we've got here suggestions about how we want to attach a node script. Firstly, it asks us what language we want to use. By default, we can use only GD script. What's that? Well, it is a language that was created especially for Godot engine. Okay, so this is recommended way of writing programs. But you might be like, hey, I know other programming languages that don't want to learn anything new. And to be honest, you can stick to that, but I highly do not recommend because this language is so easy to learn that I didn't even need to learn anything <laughs> about it uh, after, you know, just opening uh, the first basic um, script because it's just self-descriptive. It's very similar to Python, okay? It's very easy to catch and learn. And it's really enough for most things and especially for beginners. It's like it was created for people who want to just jump in and play and have fun, okay? So GD script is easy to learn and you don't need to learn it on your own from scratch, okay? Because I will show you a way with an AI, how to use AI to make a script for you or to edit things. So we got here GD script and then it asks us where we want to attach this script to because we chose what the player is going to attach to character body to the node, right? Because this is the thing that describes our player right now. And then we've got a template. We can start from something from the built in template. So code that was created by somebody else. Okay. And to be honest, we're going to choose the basic movement because we want to just have a basic movement at the start. And then you can create it as a separate file, the script, if you do not choose this option or built in, which means it will be connected to this particular node. OK, but let's do it, it differently this time. Uh, so we're not going to use the built in script. We're going to choose here a path. It's very important to organize everything since the start. Let's hit this arrow here and let's create a new folder that we're going to call scripts. So we're going to hold here every script and we know where to find them, right? It's in the scripts folder. And now when we hit create, we have got here a new editor that allows us to write code. So instructions to the thing that we've just attached our script to, right? We attach it to player. So everything that happens here is gonna happen to player. Of course, you can refer other things, but that's not the topic on this lecture. But th this is the code attached to player. And you've got from this place a way to get very easy two things that are set, for example, in inspector on the right side, right? So we can uh, access all these details here, right? From within the script. And there are lots of, you know, free uh, code written by, uh, by the Godot engine creators, right? And this scripts allows you to move with the basic movement. That's why it was called basic template. And when I play this, you will notice that our character moves, but it falls down. And uh, well, I try to move fast. Oh, okay, I've moved to the right but I fell down. And how to change it? 
Well, you might be thinking, I need to know how to code, right? But think always about each thing you learn, new thing, le each new thing you learn in Godot, as if it was a mini project, okay? We've just attached what? A script to player, we know how to do it, and we are happy, we've learned something new. Now it's time to, for example, understand what this code does, how to do it. Well, to be honest, the best way to understand what it does is to use AI. I pasted the code here and I said explain above code shortly, line by line, for a beginner. So it knows that, hey, he is talking with a beginner and he is explaining everything step by step, what it does. If you know how to program, these things will be easy to catch. If you don't know how to program at all, some things might be still confusing, like for example, this part. And to be honest, even if this part is confusing, this is not like a deal breaker, okay? It's not like uh, it's the end, you can't create anything. As I said, try to think about everything that you do now as a mini project. So. I've got here lots of lines and I will notice soon that there is something about gravity. The block checks if the character is not on the floor. If true, it applies gravity to the character's vertical velocity. Okay, so this is why we are falling down. So probably we need to just remove it. Hmm. So maybe let's do something like that. Let's copy this and I will ask. So if I don't want to fall because my character fell down, uh, I need to just remove this. So we are solving a mini project, right? Oh, okay, so we need to remove it or command it. Command means that we just want to uh, computer to not process it. And maybe later we want to, you know, get, uh, put this code back into our game. But let's just remove it, for example. So hit this and let's see if it worked. As you can see, our character is standing and now I can move forward, I can move backwards and well, we've got here enemies that we can pass through. <laughs> but this is another problem, this mini problem that we need to solve later, right? Do not focus at everything at once, you are just learning something new, you don't need to have everything perfect since the start, okay? So. You've learned in this lecture how to move your character. You've solved this mini problem. But remember, focus on the one thing at a time. When your brain says things like, I can't possibly create a video game with all the things I have to learn, right? Tell your brain something like that. But I can now move my character and I can now delete gravity. And now I can, I can attach a script. I can do all these mini things. And also notice that scenes are like mini projects, right? Because if I close all these things and I am like, hey, I want to focus today on the player. Hey, I am looking at the player scene and I'm focusing on this mini project of, for example, hey, I've attached the script and now this guy is moving, for example, right? So this is how we solve problems, step by step. I've also made a simple mistake at the start that I wanted to show you so you don't make it in future. And also it make you understand how scenes work. Notice that we've got here a player and we attach to it a script. But here, hmm, we do not have a script, which means if you want to use this player again, what happens? We've got player two that doesn't have what script attached to this player two. So when I hit another guy, there is no script. So this guy can move, they can. Well, if you want to achieve something like that, that's a good thing. But if you want to create this mini project separately from the main scene, I think in this case, we should attach a script not to the player, the scene that we've created here, right? But we should attach it to what? to the player scene. So here, it should be here, okay? Not there. And here, as you can see, it says attach a new or existing script. Oh, so I can use the existing one. I don't need to create the script, right? So let's open the file and let's find our script like this. And I will just load it. And now I've got this script attached to the main scene of play, which means when I go to the main scene, which is game, and now I attach another player, 
right? Oh, another player. It has got a script here attached, okay? So that's a big difference. So remember that you can change the properties and things regarding each new enemy that you created here or the player, right? Uh, to make it individual, to make it, you know, specific. But if you want to apply all things, to, to apply something to all the objects, all the elements that you create from the blueprint, like a player scene, right? Then you need to attach things to the main scene, not to the thing that we've got here, okay? That's a very important thing to notice while you are creating a game. Have a good day and as always, if you have any questions, feel free to ask.